Hi, I'm attorney Rylas Dana, and I'm here with my friend Marvin from Night Owl Realty. So our first video, if you missed it, you can go back. We talked about probate and, and what is a will, what, what's the last will and testament. Now, this video, I want to tell you a little bit more about, about how Marvin and I met and how to work with a probate attorney like myself and really just what to do after someone after someone passes away, how you um how you evaluate that estate and situation. Yeah. So let's let me share my screen here and let's 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 teach people how they can evaluate an estate. So after someone dies, this is this is the order that I go through. Okay. So I start with the money, right? The assets, right? You know what 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 are we talking about? Right. And a lot of times it's real estate that might trigger it. So, but what are the assets? Are the, so if you have IRAs and retirement accounts and life insurance, they're usually controlled by the beneficiary designations. Okay. So, so things like that, you want to you look to see who they're payable to. Now, bank accounts, they could be in the name of a trust or a person individually. And same thing with real estate. So, so what are the assets? And then two, the next I have is define the players. So decedent, you know, what, what's the decedent? It's a fancy word for what? A person who passed away. <laughs> a person yeah. who is no longer here on earth, let's just say. <laughs> yeah, De dead guy. I guess that's a nice way. Of, yeah. <laughs> so so decedent, you know, you know who, who are we talking about? Right. What, what's a fiduciary? A fiduciary is the person that, is in charge of handling um, their state or their affairs to make sure that it's done correctly. So right. that's their role and responsibility. Right. And then beneficiary, what are those? What's that's that? The person that's going to receive whatever the assets are that are left once they're divided up or bills and all these other types of things that are paid. Right, right. So this is, this is how my brain works. This is what I start to do. All right. You know, first, what are we dealing with? All right. Who are the players, right? Is it um, one person that passed away? Is there what a wife that I'm dealing with or is it children or, you know, is there multiple children that are beneficiaries and then what controls the assets? So, so we've got to figure out what controls the assets. So IRAs and life insurance, like I said earlier, they, they could have a beneficiary listed. If there's a, a beneficiary listed, then that's controlling. Right. The house, if it's titled in the name of the deceased person, it's controlled or, or it could be a, in the name of the deceased person or a trust. Okay. Same with the bank account. So bank accounts could also have beneficiaries too. So it's possible the bank can name a person as a beneficiary or maybe even a trust as a beneficiary. All right, so if assets are in the name of the deceased, we know they're controlled by their last will and testament, right? If you watched our first video, you now know that. <laughs> Absolutely. And if there's no will, we go to the intestate succession, look up the laws of intestacy in that state to see who has priority to serve. If there is a trust that owns a bank account, you look to see what the trust says. The trust, uh, the trust should tell you who the trustee is. Where it gets fun is that there's no trustees listed. Or the scenario, um, the people you recommended to me, the, it was like a long lost person that was listed to serve as a trustee. So, and then who are the beneficiaries? The trust is gonna trust is gonna say that. Okay. So fiduciary. So the person in charge, we call it the fiduciary, is because in the trust it's called the trustee. The last will and testament, it's called the personal representative. So fiduciary is kind of the the general term. So if you're listed as a fiduciary. It's your job to safeguard everything, uh, to get the formal authority as well. So in my example here, it's like to put on the hat is kind of how I view, right? You may be named. Right. So in the last will and testament, if you're named as a personal representative, the way you get the authority is through a probate. Right. And then you got to report to the federal and state governments. 
if you're a, if you're listed in the trustee, there still is some paperwork to do to formally accept that position as a trustee and to prove that you've accepted that position. Then you, you follow the trust, right? So then once you get appointed, you follow what those documents say or what the laws of intestacy say. Right. And um, if, if it's unclear, right? You know, sometimes it, it might be a bad trust. You know, maybe there's, um, it, maybe it contradicts itself. I see that happen sometimes. Okay. Uh, you know, hopefully not my trust, but sometimes what happens is um, people might do, um, uh, they might lose part of it. You know, they might lose one of the amendments that names someone or, you know, there's all sorts of fun things that happen when you got to start practicing law, right? right? You know, if we have the rules here and they're not good enough, that's when um, uh, you got to start, I say practicing law. So I, I'm a little biased as an attorney, but I always recommend that you hire legal counsel. You know, so if you're named in the trust or the will, um, or what, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? So again, um, I'm biased as an attorney, but as an attorney, I just see you have all the liability. You know, right. If anything goes bad and you're the fiduciary, the beneficiaries can say, you should have done this. Right. And, and here's where I hear a lot. <laughs> People, they say, I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sometimes like, your best is just not good enough. You know, yeah, it's like, and that's ooh, part it's of the like, problem. <laughs> you have to tell that to the judge. You know, you, <laughs> no, you tried your best. You know, in, in hindsight, it's clear to see what you did, right. lost money. So therefore, um, you're probably gonna be liable for that. Right. But I would agree with you. Um, I would hire someone to handle that process for you, um, especially because, like I said, there's so many moving parts and so many things that the lay person don't know um, that attorneys like yourself do know. So it would make the process way more smoother if they hire someone to handle that for them. So I definitely agree with you. Here's, here's the other part of my pitch too, is I help the personal representative or the fiduciary. I help them get paid. Right. A lot of times they say, how much do you want to charge for this? And they go, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and they say, yeah. well, you have a lot of liability if you take this on. So you are entitled to reasonable compensation for taking right. this on. And I think a lot of people don't know about the personal representative compensation piece of it. Yeah. Here's, here's another important detail too. Now, sometimes, you know, let, let me go back here. So let me go back, back up. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a challenge just to figure out what the assets are, right? You know, sometimes we don't know. Right. And, you know, so with, with real estate, it's easy to look up, especially in Arizona. Um, and you can, you can find the deed and see who the owner is. But with a bank account, you know, that's not exactly obvious, right? You don't right. know who the owner is. And the bank can't tell you anything unless you are that owner or you, or you show that you have the authority of the estate right. for doing a probate. So... Sometimes I'm meeting with these people and they're like, they go, I don't know what's out there. You know, I, I think there's something here at, at Wells Fargo, but they won't talk to me. So what would you say would be the best way for, in that scenario, for someone to get around that or how to deal with that to find and locate those assets? Yeah. So let's, let's talk briefly about probate alternatives. Okay. So in Arizona, you can do what's called a personal property affidavit if what you're collecting is worth less than 75000 Right. So if there's a bank account and it's, it's less than 75000 and that's the only thing that's not in trust or that doesn't have a beneficiary, so if that's the only thing in the name of the person's estate, Arizona allows you to do that small estate affidavit. Correct. So what I recommend in that situation is you go to the bank and see if they'll tell you, say, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm meeting with an attorney. I'm trying to figure out if I need a probate or if it's less than 75,000. Can, right. can you at least tell me that? Right. And, and usually they will. So if it's, a lot of times they're pretty good at this, actually, you know, if it's below that amount, 
or not always, you know, the, the banks, a lot of times are horrible, I, I should say, <laughs> they're not always helpful, but you might get a good banker in there, right? Once, once right. you work your way and, and, and get a, a good banker, um, they might even give you one of those small estate affidavits. They say, here, you know, if you fill this out, then we can help you get that account. Right. And so for someone who, who find their, find themselves in that position, should they have the death certificate with them when they go to the bank? Is that as the- much as they have, the better. Right. Now, sometimes they don't have it yet, but if they have a death certificate, great. Take that, you know, take whatever documents you have. Because a lot of times it's the same person named in the will and also named in the trust to serve. Okay. So what I tell them is, um, you know, just assume that they put it in the trust or that, it, that it's in there and just go as far as you can until they stop talking to you. Right. Because if it's, if it's not on the trust, <laughs> you know, they're, they're not gonna be able to give you that information. You know, if it's, if it's in their name and they passed away, um, what you want to figure out then is um, also if there's beneficiaries. So right. I, I've called a lot of these banks and, you know, what I do is, you know, again, you just, you try to get as far as you can, you know, see how much information they give you. And then once they stop, it's like, okay, well, can you tell me if there's a beneficiary listed? Right. And then it's like, okay, even if it's not, you know, me or my client, will you reach out and contact those beneficiaries? Right, and sometimes what, sometimes what we have to do is we think it's this person and that person who are passed away. Can you tell me if it is those people? Right. And then once you start giving information, the big, well, it is that person. Okay. And, and if we know that person's passed away, that's listed as a beneficiary, that has the same effect as no beneficiary listed. Okay. So no beneficiary listed means controlled by a state, you know, the, like the dead person's name individually. Right. And then at that point, when it goes through probate, is this the piece where the judge will name a personal representative if there's no beneficiaries named, um, let's say, in the will or in the trust? Yeah, so it, let's say there's an IRA with no beneficiaries listed. Right. So then it's part of the estate. Okay. Which is controlled by the will if there is one, or just the default order of who the beneficiaries are. Now, but let's go back to the scenario. What I, what I wanted to get at earlier is if we don't know what assets are in the estate. So right. if you came to me and said, okay, Rylas, you know, I um, you know, my, my parents passed away. I think they have something at um, at Wells Fargo. But what if I find out they have a bunch of debt? You know, you're, you're telling me you're not going to do probate for free, <laughs> that, that, that you're going to charge for your time. But, but what if I pay you and, and we get in there and there's no assets left? Right. That, that would suck. Yeah, that so, would. So here's, here's the order of who gets paid. Here's the priority of, of how the money in the estate gets distributed if there's more, more debts and more uh, creditors than there are assets. Okay. Guess who gets paid first? Well, I would probably say, you know, the government's going to get paid first in most cases. So taxes, I would probably say is going to go to taxes. And then um, after nope. taxes, nope. I'm getting paid first, the oh, attorney. Yeah. Well, I guess Le- you are legal at fees. the top. Legal yes. fees. Okay. Guess who gets paid second after legal fees? Then I would say the government. No. No. Personal representative. You as a personal representative. Really? So okay. Then the debts of the estate. So so again, uh, you know, taxes, the government, they have their own rules, things, but uh, just just regular debts, they get paid after. So okay. first the legal fees. Second, the personal representative. Okay. And then debt. Then, then the creditors. Okay. Then the beneficiaries. Okay. And then so <clears throat> the debt falls under, let's say, medical bills, all those types of things. If they had something associated um, with medical bills prior to their death, then that falls under the debt piece as well. Yes. So, so in debt, I would break it up in secured Secured debt and unsecured. Okay. So secured would be like mortgages, you know, where they're attached to the property and things like that. You know, they have that security interest. 
but medical bills, credit card bills, things like that are unsecured debt. Okay. So if, if all of those things are, if there's more debt than there are assets, um, you know, first the attorney gets paid, then the personal representative, then the creditors get paid or, or divide whatever is left over. Right. So that's, that's something that a lot of personal representatives don't know about. You know, they don't, they don't know that they're, that they're entitled to get paid. Right. So that's, that's my other reason why I recommend, you know, you know, hiring an attorney. So A, you have all the liability and then B, by hiring an attorney, they can help you get paid. Okay. So, uh, especially if there's multiple beneficiaries, you know, if, if there's the more beneficiaries there are, the more, the more people you got to answer to the more likelihood right. of, um, of, uh, of, of kind of an issue coming up. Right. So let's say if someone was named as a personal representative and they don't want to take on that role. Happens all the time. As you can imagine, right? Right. Like, like oh, that, that's me, but I, I don't want the hot potato. No way. I don't. Uh, <laughs> right. I, I, so the, just because someone's named, they don't have to do it. So they can decline to serve. And then it would go to the next person named, if, if anyone, or if no one else is named, then we're just back to the laws of intestacy. Right. So... But let's say there was a surviving spouse and kids from a prior relationship. So by default, in, in Arizona, the laws of intestacy, it says that that surviving spouse would receive half of the estate. And also that the surviving spouse has priority to serve as a personal representative. Okay. So, but if she didn't want to do it, then the kids could open up the probate or they could serve as the, the personal representative. Okay. So wife could either opt out and just say, no, I don't, I don't want to do it. And, and um, he'll let them do it. Right. Um, all right. Let's see what else. So, so what controls we went through that in test aid. Yeah. And then if you're the fiduciary, you, you just follow the rules, you know, you'll see what they say. Um, depends on the trust. The trust might have, have to create additional trust. You know, okay. if there's minor children, or if there's what we call dynasty trusts that are designed to live on. So that's part of the job of, of the trustee to do that. Okay. So, um, all right. If, if you're a beneficiary, what I recommend is get a copy of the legal documents so you know what's going on. And ask for an accounting. If you get those things, you know, if, if they... If you uh, if they give you a copy of the legal documents like the will and the trust, and they give you an idea of what the assets are, then be patient. You you give them time. Right. And so who who could they get those legal documents from? So would the personal representative give them those documents, or is that something that they would get from the court? Just depending on what the circumstances. From the personal are. representative. Okay. Or from the trustee. So when we represent the trustee of a trust, one of the first things we do is we give notice to all the beneficiaries. We do it okay. for a couple of reasons. You know, one, it's the law. You know, right. Arizona trust code requires it. And by, as soon as we give notice, it starts a clock ticking. They have 120 days where they can make a challenge. Okay. So we like to do it for that reason as well too. So if they really do have an issue, it, it starts the clock ticking. And then really, I, I just think it's a show of good faith, right? Like as long as Absolutely. you know, if they feel like they're getting the information, you know, we're, we're not trying to hide anything. You know, so I, I try to be very forthcoming when I'm managing estates. So there's no surprises for the beneficiaries. Right. Now, is there a certain time frame? Let's say I'm appointed a personal representative. Is there a certain time frame that I have to notify all of those beneficiaries? Now, if there's a probate, you have to notify them right in the beginning. Okay. In, in that beginning paperwork, they're going to get notified. So, okay. Uh, well, thanks, Marvin. I, I got to run. I, um, looks, like my, looks like my next meeting is, is waiting for me. I'm starting to get uh, messages from my assistant. Okay. Uh, but let, let people know where they can find you. Oh, you can absolutely. You can find me at nightowlrealty.com or you can contact me over at 
probate in arizona.com so either one of those two you can reach me or you can also reach me out on youtube um, you can find me there uh, my channel is night owl realty on youtube as well as probate in arizona on youtube well thanks marvin thanks for everyone watching in the future we appreciate you appreciate your comments if you have other topics you'd like to hear marvin and i discuss leave them below in the comments and we'll see you next time absolutely thank you rylas thank you